Morning, everybody. Finally, back up here in the master bedroom. The goal today, ladies and gentlemen, is to paint these three sides of the room and the ceiling. But before I do that, I need to go around and sand out that third coat of mud, that skim coat that I put on, and hopefully everything will be smoothed down enough to be able to put some primer on. One of the details I tend to fuss over is where the wall and the ceiling meet, the horizontal corner all around the room. And if that's wavy at all, it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb when the wall color meets the ceiling color. Look, look, above the window right there, it's a little wavy. I'll sand that out as best I can with my sanding block, but I'm not gonna fuss over it. You know, not like I used to. The house is 47 years old, what are you gonna do? I'm 47 years old, I'm wavy above my window. All right, we got some tunes going. Got the iPad inside of the gallon Ziploc bag to protect it from the dust. I can still touch through it, so that's cool. Got the dust bong set up, and I'm getting ready to throw some 220 on the end of that thing, and then I'm going right up the air to get started on that. Okay, I was able to smooth that out. Looks okay. Worked my way around the perimeter of the room. Took a little break, I was looking around, and I noticed there's a little void right there in the mud. See that spot? Right there? Right there, see it? Well anyway, for spots like that, this is what works for me. I call it fluff, super lightweight stuff. And I apply it with a really flexible uh, putty knife, like that. I'll get on a ladder and show you. So I get some fluff on there. Get it on the ceiling. Just kind of mash it in there, like that. Just kind of screw that off. See how that's all filled in right there? That's good. And this little bit here, I'll leave that. This stuff dries real quick. So I'll go around and I'll hit some other places, let that set up. And by the time I'm done doinking around with all this, I can come up there and sand all that out. That's the fluff right there. That's what works for me. You can do whatever you want. I'm not worried about it, see? Because the flat white paint is gonna hide imperfections. And as long as I don't have any ridges up there that cast shadows, this is all gonna blend right in beautiful and dad won't even know. I'm done with the vacuum setup and I've been going around with the sanding block and mostly I use it to get uh, definition in the corners like that. But look how much dust comes off the sanding block. Shows you how good that vacuum works. In the previous video, I talked about this mesh tape and why I like to use it instead of paper tape. One of the reasons is when you're sanding, it'll start to show through, see it? Uh, and you know when to slow down. See, look, 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 see it there? Well, I'm done with all the sanding. Now what, Scott? Now what are you gonna do? Well, I'm gonna take that sponge right there and I'm gonna squeeze it out and I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna sponge down the whole room and get all the dust off and get it all ready for paint. Earlier I talked about how the flat white paint is gonna hide imperfections. Well, that's just what the popcorn ceiling did to every single one of these houses that was built in this neighborhood back in the 70s. It's cheap, it's fast, and you don't have all that labor in sanding that. One of the reasons why you would want a textured ceiling would be to uh, help the room out acoustically, you know, to cut down on the reverb and the echo. But in the case of a uh, large construction outfit coming in and building an entire neighborhood, it's about saving time and money. See this area right here? That's the original mud from the 70s, and all I did was scrape the popcorn off. Now if I take my damp sponge, work that out, and when I come back with my paint, oh my god, that is going to be beautiful. So now all I got to do is take this thing and go over the whole ceiling with it. Make sure it's all smoothed out and all the walls, get all the dust off, and get ready for paint. I'm going to have some lunch first. So you see that for a tuna is one who awake from the illusion of samsara. That is from the thought that there is something to get out of life, that tomorrow will bring it to you, that in the course of time it will be all right. And therefore one is set pursuing time as if you were trying to quench your thirst by drinking salt water. Okay, all done sponging down the walls and the ceiling. And for those of you at home who are following along, your bedroom should look like this right now. See all this? This is what it should look like. So I'm getting ready to paint, but first I gotta vacuum up all this dust. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. 
boss man right there. I almost forgot one thing here before I get going. I'm gonna take off all the outlet covers. That one's off already, but there's a couple here. I wanna make sure I get that out on the switch plate. I don't wanna accidentally paint on that. Dude, there's so many coats of paint on that from the previous owner. <laughs> I'd use dynamite to get that screw out of there. Anyhow, I'm gonna take this knife, break the surface tension right there, take the cover off. Otherwise, it would tear the paper and I'd be mudding again. Got myself a fresh tea. Got all my paint gear up here. We're gonna start with the Kills oil-based primer. It's gonna work better covering that water stain than a uh, water-based primer would. We'll get started with that first. Wow, you guys. This stuff works really good. But you definitely wanna be in a well-ventilated area. Ooh. I'm okay, I'm loved, I'm safe. Everything's gonna be okay. I know why they call it kills you. It's because it kills brain cells. Yeah, and I used up my last few good spares on this job right here this evening. At least I got primer on the ceiling. It's looking good. I didn't get any on the walls yet, but we'll have to do that tomorrow after I come down. On that note, time to get cleaned up and have some dinner.